How's it going YouTube? It's APOC. Today I'm going to show you how to make wings in Lens Studio. This is inspired by this post on Lens Studio forum. Someone wants to know how to make wings. I've seen a couple people post about this or message me about it and they linked one of my tutorials here. So um, I thank you for already watching my tutorials and all you have to do is really combine it with this tutorial of mine which they didn't link um, to, to do this effect. Now this is what it's going to look like. Oh, that's snap camera. Let me find Lens Studio here. Um, this is what it looks like stationary. And the big thing is that I can rotate my head and the wings only move with my shoulders really. So that's the challenging part for a lot of people. I'm gonna show you how to fix that as well as still being segmented behind me. Now segmentation looks bad because my chair messes with it, but as you can see, it's, it's pretty good on this girl here. So let's just start fresh with a new project. All right, so I'm just gonna drag in my wings here, which looks like that. Just got them from Google. The first thing you're going to want to do is make a head binding. Now, if you're doing an image like I am, you can just start with a face image and it will just add everything for you. Head binding and an image below it, all you need. If you're doing a 3D object, you want to start with a head binding. And then since we're already using segmentation, you probably don't want the head to occlude the 3D object. So we're just going to uncheck that, which disables it, or just straight up delete it. You can right click delete or just hit delete way of it selected. And then you want to attach your 3D object under that. I don't have a 3D object on me, so I'm just going to add this box in under there like that. From now on, the tutorial will be pretty much the same for you with the 3D object, but let's go back to my face image for my image here. So first thing you're going to, want to do, make a new material. If you're using the face image, you can't use the default. It's not going to work. Uh, if you already have a 3D model, it probably has its own material already. If not, just make a new material. You can click on this field here, add new, and we can choose from a, an array of materials here. I'll just explain the most common ones. PBR, diffuse, and unlit. PBR, if it's reflective. Diffuse, if it's not reflective but still affected by lighting. And unlit, if it's not affected by lighting. And it's just always going to be like exactly how it is in the image, basically. Which is the best for images. Unlit is usually used for 2D images. Diffuse and PBR are typically 3D models that are affected by lighting and reflections, things like that. So just choose Unlit, because I'm doing an image, and then click on your Unlit material. Now, no matter which material you selected, your changes here are going to be the same. First change, Blend Mode, change that to Normal. Second, Base Texture. If you're using one, you're going to want to change this to whatever texture it should be. 3D models should probably have a texture. If not, just uncheck it and you can still use this base color here as uh, for the rest of the tutorial. It doesn't matter if there's a texture or not, but we'll add my texture back. And now we're going to add in an opacity texture and we're going to click on the field there. Click the plus button when the new screen pops up, hover over segmentation, and add portrait background. This is going to cut out the person from our image. But one thing you're going to notice is that this opacity texture will scale this up real fast. You can see the head of her is cut out right here. So it's scaled to the size of the image or your 3D model, which is not what you want. It's not going to look right. It's mapped to the wrong UVs, things like that. To fix that, go back to your material, check Transform UV 2, and change the source to Screen UV. Now under your opacity texture, go to your Texture UV, change that to transform UV2. Now you can see the opacity texture is cutting her out perfectly. That's because it's now mapped to the screen UV rather than your object's UV. What you're going to want to do now is resize this. If you're using an image, it's a bit more difficult. If you're doing it this way, it's not the best way to do it. Click on your head binding and make sure this is head center. As well for 3D objects, make sure that says head center before you start doing anything. Now click on your image and choose view 3D scene. And change it in here it's going to be way easier because the other way messes with the attachment point if it's not head center then it's going to rotate weird when we get to the rotation aspect of this tutorial so scale it up just like that and i think that looks pretty good there we go so yeah you can see the posse texture is working properly now and we're good to go now this is done if you want it to rotate with the head let me try and show you a demo here my camera's been glitchy so i'm using snap camera now um, if I rotate my head like this, my shoulders aren't moving, but you can see the wings are. Not what you want, is it? So if we go back in here, we'll disable that for the performance. 
we're going to want to add in this tutorial here. So in the description, there's a script to do this for you. Let's go on that. I already have the script open. I'm just going to copy it. It will just open up pastebin, copy that. Now, down here, you are want to add a new object, which we're going to add the script to. Down here, you want to add the script. Double click on your script. It's going to pop up the script editor. Paste the script in there. You'll see a dot pop up. Hit Control S or Command S while you're still clicked in here. It's going to save it and apply your changes. It should turn into an X if the changes were applied. Now click on the object we just added in the objects list. Or actually, no, don't click on that. My bad. Click on your head binding and drag the script into there. Now the head binding is no longer rotate. That's what the script is doing. It's just setting the world rotation of the head binding to not rotate. Um, now, if you're a developer, you probably notice this is not setting it to zero, zero, zero. So it could cause a problem if someone opens the lens with their head sideways. But really, every time I've tested it, it seems if it's running on initialize, it's not going to get the head position yet. So the rotation should, should stay at zero. And if we test it out over here, you can see that now it is no longer rotating with my head and it's still tracked to my shoulders. So that's all there is to it, guys. Again, it works for 3D objects as well. The only change is just not adding an image and just adding your 3D object instead. And thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Peace.